Thanks to the ease of accessibility, almost every new anime nowadays is being watched by someone somewhere. And even if a great show largely slips under the radar, there will always be a small but very vocal group that give these shows a bit of attention after everything is said and done. With manga on the other hand, there's such a vast pool of titles that even for those way more involved in the community, it's a lot easier to pick up this random hidden gem that you've never heard anyone talking about. So with this in mind and my newest partnership with Bookwalker, I thought it'd be fun to test out their selection and find 5 random titles I hadn't read before that I found really fun. Both famous manga I'd heard of previously and some I had no idea about going into it. Everything here is available on Bookwalker in ebook form and all their links are in the description. So if anything catches your interest you can use coupon code GIGUK to get a discount on your first purchase. No this video is not directly sponsored by them but for every one of you who uses that coupon code does help me out just to be transparent. So with that out of the way let's jump right into it. It's always very fulfilling and satisfying to see characters get what they deserve and man does Kakigori do this to an almost self-gratifying point. I've always had a soft spot for underdog stories as the goddamn degenerate shonen trash fuckboy that I am, but the feeling is especially sweet when you couple this with overly egotistical characters just waiting to be taken down a peg. Kakigori details an OG-like transfer student named Jubami Yumenko entering a school focused entirely on gambling. Students live and die by gambling here and the teachers are apparently a fucking okay with this, culminating in a hierarchy system completely controlled controlled by the student council. Your worth is determined by how much money you can obtain. The wealthy sit at the top enjoying the high life, with those in debt at the bottom become the school's dog, later having their lives sold via marriage, childbirthing, jobs, etc. You know, all that standard human slavery shit you see all the time in high school. This is where our main lead comes in. Oh, that's right, you know, shit's about to go down. As you probably guess, what makes Kakiguri such an addictive read is watching Yumenko rise to this system and effortlessly beating down powerful foes with seemingly simple observations. It's her ability to be able to see through her opponents and instantly perceive a situation and use their own system against them that is just so satisfying, using a mix of psychological manipulation and cunning to gain the upper hand. It has a very similar appeal to shows like No Game No Life and Kaiji, with a character rising up the ranks by betting on a series of games. But what sets it apart is our lead girl. She's both compelling and also kind of disturbing. Initially coming off as an innocent naive girl incorporated into this sadistic messed up school system, you slowly come to realise that behind her calm demeanour, she is as terrifying or even more so than the people she takes down. It's one of those series that is just such an easy read and you'll find yourself consuming more and more chapters just to see who she'll take down next and how she does it. With the student council members having a wide mix of chaotic and crazy personalities just waiting to be taken off their high horse. All this not mentioning the art which is also pretty great. Having said all this there is also an anime adaptation coming soon in the summer but even so I think this is definitely worth the read before that as once you pick it up you'll find it very hard to put down. What's the matter? There's no need to think so much with only three cards, right? <laughs> Do you think I didn't notice? What? Everyone! Aren't you cooperating with Mari-san, is it? <laughs> but based on what are Your you- Your method was clumsy. You used the same trick to win both 500,000 yen rounds. Isn't it natural that I would suspect something was up? You won't be able to fool anyone if you're not prepared to shed your own blood. Because the real fun starts now. I'm sure at one point in our lives we've all felt we were born for something more than what we are doing now. To be stronger, to have more wealth, to be more popular. However, we rarely get the chance to feel we've obtained what was needed to be the perfect place in our lives. So from the creator of Gantz comes Inuyashiki, which shows us what would happen if two people were to obtain the power to complete what they perceive is the perfect life. Is it a life where you protect happiness by saving the populace or by gaining power and instead causing unhappiness? Our lead Inuyashiki is your average salary man nobody, stuck with a disrespectful family, a dead-end job, a disease that makes him look older than he is, and just to make things slightly better, he's just been diagnosed with stomach cancer. Yep, it's just your typical average depressing reflection on life, until one day he is suddenly hit by a shining light that transforms him into a robot-like being who is able to fly, shoot bullets, and even heal people. Yeah, I know, okay, just stick with me here. Given these godlike powers and believing this is a chance to give justice and goodness to the world, he begins his sudden new life as Japanese elderly Robocop, becoming his own super-powered vigilante and writing the injustices he sees in the world. All Alright, that does sound a bit stupid when I say it out loud. Unbeknownst to him though, he isn't the only one who got hit by this light, as a teenager was also given these same abilities. Instead of using his powers for justice though, the kid uses it to create injustices in the world, killing anyone for fun, starting by going into people's homes and massacring their entire family. Neither are aware initially of each other's existence, and it's the parallel between both their stories that makes it work. It's a gruesome tale of superheroes and supervillains, the darkest aspect of the human nature, and the reason why this manga is so good isn't just because of the addictive stories of Inia 
Miyashiki's Path of Justice and Shishigami's Terrible Triad of Injustices, but because it isn't nearly as black and white as just a battle between good and evil. Anyone familiar with Gans will know that Hiroya Oku is not one to shy away from horrific and disturbing human acts and Inuyashiki is definitely no exception to this. While our leader is meant to be the symbol of justice, as he encounters more detestable humans, the brand of justice he serves becomes increasingly harsh, from beating down thugs to mass eye gouging, and is certainly not something you'd see in a family friendly superhero movie. The kid, on the other hand, who initially was portrayed as a sociopathic serial killer, is shown to have a shred of sympathy in the odd moments. If you were a fan of the Gantz manga, this will probably be right up your alley, as aside from the violence, Oku manages to bring over his beautiful, almost stylized realism art, which really shines in not only the action scenes, but also the almost grotesque body morphing. And hey, there's just something quite cathartic about seeing a frail, elderly looking man laying the smack down on a bunch of thugs and Yakuza. This is not one for the faint of heart, but for those of you that can handle it, Inuyashiki is definitely worth a read. Let's be honest here, most of us know fuck all about wine. If we're ever in a situation in a restaurant where we have to pick one, the basic process involves scanning through this menu of fancy gibberish only to focus entirely on price, having the waiter give you a small sample where you give it a whiff and a twirl even though everyone around you knows that you look like a pompous dickhead who has no idea what they're doing. And last of all, you have that one sweet sip to discern that yes, what you actually tasted was in fact wine. Was it good wine? Who the fuck knows? We all think the entire thing was a bullshit act people do to look smart. You know who you fucking are. But the magic of a manga like Drops of God is that you can make the entire process not only compelling, but also appreciative of everything that goes into it. Shizuku Kanzaki is the son of one of the most famous wine critics in the world, who also happens to fucking hate wine. Being forcefully taught to hone his sense of taste and smell from a young age, he's loathed wine his entire life even though he's never tasted it. That is, until he learns about his father's death. Being the difficult git his father is in death, his will states that he'll only give away his million dollars worth of wine away to the person that can correctly name what he has identified as the 13 best wine in the world, with the very best being known as the Drops of God. Just to spice things up, Shizuka needs to compete with his newly adopted wine genius brother-in-law over who can do this first, and is thus thrust into a world of wine where he has to use his natural skill beaten into him as a kid to overcome this pretentious twat trying to steal his family legacy. Through the journey our lead takes getting over his hatred of wine and learning to forgive and wanting to be closer to his now deceased father, you end up learning way more about wine you initially couldn't imagine in a way that's incredibly entertaining. Finding out the variety of taste that wine can give, how a cheap wine can surpass even the most expensive if you know what you're looking for, and how truly hard it is to become a professional in the world of wine. It gave me an understanding that it's not just about wealthy snooty people trying to show off their wealthy snooty knowledge, but it's about a drink that invokes feeling that none else can when you just take the time to taste and truly appreciate it. The way they describe the feeling of choosing the right wine sounds really magical, like listening to the perfect song or appreciating a beautiful painting. We end up learning all this through Shizuku's eyes, and the real beauty is that we see his growth as a character as he not only learns more about wine, but also about himself with the wines that really connect and say something to him. Of course, all this builds up to the most exciting showdowns, and my favourite moments were the times when the characters were competing to choose the right wine, where all the knowledge the manga throws at us comes into use in the most satisfying way. This mix of competition, character growth, and actual knowledge and appreciation behind wine is what made Drops of God a real surprise for me, as I never thought a manga about wine could grip me as much as it did. And maybe you'll come out of it like me thinking, well, I guess wine could do more than just give me a banging headache in the morning. <coughs> What's wrong, Tomine? I thought you were 99% sure about that wine. <laughs> that 1999 Georges Romier Chambol Musini Les Amores is your answer, isn't it? What was your choice? Tell me what wine you picked! This is what I chose as one of the twelve, the first apostle. How? How can this be? I'm 100% certain. We live in a time when social media plays an integral part of modern society, as terrifying or optimistic as it sounds. A world where we're all competing for the retweet or share button, lives are broadcasted with an enriched filter on them, and snarky opinions about anime and more are aired out in public for all to see. You can follow me on Twitter at GigoKZ. It's essentially one massive game that we are all playing where you are your own avatars, with all sorts of other players out there. So what happens if we take all these elements and put it into a game with actual stakes behind it? Well then, you get Real Account. Real Account is the newest social media trend to sweep the nation. In a hypothetical world where Facebook became uncool when Grandma started using it, YouTube became a family-friendly exclusive safe space, Twitter was a toxic cesspool of public opinion, and everyone else got bored of seeing people putting Instagram filters on their lives. Oh wait. This is all turned on its head, however, when thousands of users are suddenly sucked into the world of Real Account, where users have to complete a series of games to escape. The twist is, however, if you lose all your followers, then you die. But if you fail a game, you also die, and so does every that follows you. Ho oh, ho, that's right, you guys are fucked! 
What? The premise is your standard death game tournament we've seen a lot in anime, but the real thing that makes it interesting is how it touches on subjects that are very relevant today and puts a creative spin that puts things into an entirely different perspective. The exaggerated view of the importance of followers on our social media gives us a false sense of self-worth, but how much does that really matter in the grand scheme of things? Real account doesn't just touch on that subject, but also creates a great satirical view of how we approach our online persona. Each death game is themed around a different part of our collective online behaviour, whether it be about those who seek attention or how we judge people on a surface level, and makes you think about behaviour which never really passes your mind that people do on a daily basis online. How close are we actually to someone just because we're friends with them on Facebook? How much do you really know about a person when their lives are put through a glorified filter? Do you change your behaviour just because you gain some anonymity through the web? Or how about a game where your life literally hangs in the balance of making a post that can gain a certain like to dislike ratio? It's a fascinating read because we've all played or seen people play these games before, though of course we never really thought about them as games, but just the way that people acted for the instant gratification of receiving a like or a favourite and how cheap that actually is. Which is why for this video we should aim for 20,000 likes on this video! Like, comment and subscribe! I will say right now though that I did not enjoy the last arc of the manga nearly as much as the rest of it, but it was definitely a fun ride overall and an easy recommendation for anyone who's been a part of this social media game, which I assume you already are watching this on a video sharing platform. It's a very interesting commentary for this thing that you've played an active part in, presented in a simple death tournament format that's fun, easy to follow and everyone is familiar with. So if that sounds interesting to you then it's definitely worth reading through a bit of this. It's remarkably hard to find some form of media that you know will become a classic that was made within your lifetime, and even harder to find one that can be well liked by just about everyone who decides to view it. Vinland Saga is one of those very things. Now I know this is not exactly a new recommendation by any means for those of you familiar with manga, but for many of you who have never delved into this world, I can wholeheartedly say that this is one of the greatest manga of all time to never get an anime adaptation. It's a bloody tale of revenge and a historic epic reminiscent of titles like Berserk and Vagabond. The set is 1013 England in the brutal time of the Vikings. Thorfinn is a skilled young Viking who witnessed the death of his father by the hands of Askeladd, the leader of a mercenary group. As just a young boy, driven by pure hatred and a desire for revenge, he joins the very mercenary group who murdered his father in hopes of one day defeating and killing Askeladd in a one-on-one -on -one duel. Though while that is just the basic premise, there is absolutely no way I can cover the amounts of layers contained here in just a short recommendation. Thorfinn's path of revenge is a saga sprawling with violence, redemption and the meaning of being a warrior. One thing that really stands out early on is the dynamic that Thorfinn shares with our antagonist. Askeladd may be the villain who killed Thorfinn's father to trigger these events, but he's also the closest thing to Thorfinn's mentor, who raised him to be the skilled warrior he ended up being, and is able to manipulate all the anger and hatred to keep him under control, binding him to this web of tension and violence. These are just two characters in a very rich and diverse cast, and the series is filled with deep and complex relationships such as this that really grips you and builds on this epic tale that will keep you on the edge of your seat. If there is one reason this manga might not be for you, it's that it's unforgivingly brutal not only in presentation but also in theme and tone. Morality is not something that is black and white and a major theme is the ambiguous line between what is right and wrong, casting a shadow over every action our characters take in a malevolent world drenched in blood. Nothing here is romanticised and the atrocities that occur feel soaked in an air of realism. You witness the viciousness of war and the toils it has not only on our Viking main characters but also on innocent people who just wish to survive, but it's this brutality that adds a real depth to the story and characters. It's not the kind of violence that feels gratuitous or edgy, it's heavy, ruthless like the story itself and oftentimes you can finish a chapter feeling exhausted and drained. Of course I cannot mention this manga without talking about the spectacular art. It's extremely brutal and gory but it's drawn very realistically and it has incredible attention to detail. Some of the panels are absolutely breathtaking, detailing landscapes of the devastation of battles fought or sometimes it's a village or field. Whatever the case, is definitely some of the best art that the world of manga has to offer. This title is an absolute classic in the manga world and for good reason. It's rare that you get to see a manga so well crafted in every aspect and there's no way I can do the series justice without a full video on it. So if you haven't done so already, you owe it to yourself to read this masterpiece because it will be a decision that you will not regret. And that's everything I wanted to mention in this one video. If anything sounds like something you'd want to check out, they are all available on Bookwalker in the links in the description. Use coupon code GIGAK for a discount on your first purchase, even if you're just buying the first volume to check things out. It'll help me out for every one of you who does, and also the industry too, as everything here is 100% legal. And now that me and Alan have both spent the last week and a half editing this video and are both on the verge of insanity, I think it's time for a little treat. Oh shit, do you see that? 
That's color. Oh God, I almost forgot what it looked like. Hey guys, hope you enjoyed that video. Thank you very much this month to Thrones Melt, Jared Cattell, Gabe Brown, Vincent Mooney, Lau Ken, and everyone else on Patreon for helping to support me for this month. So this video is actually meant to be done last week since I thought it was going to be a quick and easy video. But who knew that making a manga video would take two people editing this all day, every day, until their sanity is almost gone to get this out a week late. <sighs> Yeah, this took way longer than we anticipated, so if you do end up using the coupon for Bookwalker, we'd, we'd definitely appreciate it. Just a little bit. But at the end of the day, we hope you enjoyed how the final video looked. I'll also be at MCM London next week, so anyone there, be on the lookout. I'll probably be setting up a meetup on this channel someday, so be on the lookout for that as well. Anyway, that's it for me. I've been Gigug, and I'll see you all next time.